First I'm going to start by drawing an outline on this piece of tile of the shape and the size of the tendons that I'm going to create and the veins. Now I'm mixing up a clear sculpt gel, a little bit of blue silicon pigment to create a vein-like colour. And once this has been mixed I'm going to apply it as thinly as possible into the outline of the veins. Now I'm going to use a paintbrush lightly dampened with isopropyl alcohol to blend out the edges a little bit without flattening it too much. Now this is clear sculpt gel with a white silicon pigment in it to create the tendons. And to smooth this out I'm going to use um, my wax spatula with some isopropyl alcohol on it to help slide it over the top and smooth out that. Now I'm drawing an outline of where I want the cut or the incision to be, um, the muscle placement and the ligament placement and just generally planning out how it's going to look before I start. Now this is skin coloured sculpt gel. I'm going to mix this up and apply the first layer of, of fake skin over the arm area. I'm going to um, extend it past where the incision is so that it can blend into my skin when it's pulled back. I'm using isopropyl alcohol on the tool to help slide it over and smooth out all the bumps and also using isopropyl alcohol um, on a sponge and the sponge is going to help blend out the silicon and also it's going to help take away some of the shine of the silicon and you can also use an anti-shine for that purpose. Um, there is a step which I did forget to do um, which is to create the incision in the arm while the silicon is still quite soft and moldable. Um, I, I did go away and hair dry the arm until it was cured and firm to speed it up. Now I'm making a second layer of sculpt gel because the first layer is quite translucent and too thin so I'm putting a second layer down on top. using the tool damp and device of purple alcohol to help smooth it out and take away some of the shine. Now I'm using a spatula to, to carve the incision wound. Um, but because that bottom layer was already solidified, I now have to use a sharp tool to get through it and it actually did cut into my skin a little bit. Um, and it's, it's not exactly safe because the skin is quite thin there and you have all the veins to be using a sharp tool there. So I would definitely not recommend doing this and just making sure that you put the incision in the first layer if you do two layers. And then again in the second layer so that there's nothing to cut through, you can just peel it back once it's cured. Now I'm mixing up a third, a third mixture of skin coloured sculpt gel to do the hand outline. I'm going to try and keep it quite um, sharp in the inside but blend out the edges onto the outside of the hand and up into the fingers. I'm using the tool to sharpen up the inside now. I tried using medical tape to stick the skin parts back but they kept bouncing back so you might need to get a second person to hold those out for you while you do the inside of the arm. And this is using um, Telsus 7 silicon adhesive where I want the tendons to be and then I'm sticking down the tendons where I've outlined it. And I do wish I put the second one a bit closer to the middle and a bit too far towards the edge. Now these are just cotton buds which have had the cotton removed from them. I thought that would be a cool thing to use for the hand tendons but they're actually 
a bit too thin and I, I wish I had made them out of the white sculpture on the on the tile like I made the other tendons. This is clear sculpt gel mixed with red, brown and yellow silicon pigment to make a muscle tone. So at the stage where I got my boyfriend's help with holding the skin open because it was being quite tricky. I'm going to apply the muscle tone in, in two big muscles towards the back which blend into the tendons over the thumb and I'm going to use it around the, the finger tendons mostly to anchor them so they stop moving so much and, and to kind of disguise where they, they start and end. Using a tool to smooth them out and a sponge to smooth them out both with isopropyl alcohol to help them slide over the silicon without it being too sticky. And this is a, a pointed but blunt tool which I'm using to give the muscles texture and just carve those lines into the muscle. Now this is um, cutting some of the excess silicon off the veins and I fast forwarded it but you basically cut out all of the veins into a, into a thinner shape. And now I'm putting the telesis adhesive onto the veins and then sticking them onto the arm and the hand and just playing around with the placement. And some of them do overhang, so I'm using little scissors to cut them off and tap them as close to the edge of the skin as possible. Until I'm happy with the way they look. And this is the second vein being put towards the back. Now I'm using clear sculpt gel to, with, with some yellow and, and white silicon pigments to create that layer of like fatty tissue that's over the muscles and under the skin. But um, it didn't turn out quite the way I wanted it to. I'm not sure whether it was just too translucent or the wrong texture or the wrong colour. I haven't quite figured out what went wrong, but I wasn't entirely happy with this. But I put it around all the outside of the skin and over the muscles. And over the wrist. And, and basically it kind of attached to all the veins, which I just spent the time cutting out thinner and made them look thicker and, and a bit muddier and joined together. So. Again, using the sponge and some tools with isopropyl alcohol on them to smooth it out and get texture in it. I'm just removing some of it now. I realized I put too much on, so I'm removing some of it with the wax spatula. This is my Skin Illustrator alcohol activated makeup. I'm using the blood tone to, to put some blood or some darker reds into the wound. And then I, I'm using some just normal cosmetic makeup fixing spray here to try and seal the surface. Um, I should have really used a proper special effects makeup sealer, but I didn't have any. So I used the cosmetic fixing spray, and the, as a result, the, the skin illustrator is beating up quite badly on the surface of the silicon. So I was getting a bit, getting a bit cranky at this stage because the, you know, the texture of the, of the pigments was just too. And the texture of the pigments was wrong. It was just beating up too much and I was getting frustrated and I'd been doing this for about maybe three hours at this stage and it was getting quite close to midnight so I was tired. So the paint job gets a bit muddy. Uh, I'm putting darker, darker like a black and a darker blood tone around the outside of the hand to try and create more depth. Um, but it's not, it's not really staying on in the way that I want it to. Because it's beading. after this muddy and rushed and frustrating <laughs> paint job, I end up deciding to use Krylon Fresh Scratch Blood and Dark because the blood gel will, will stay on better in these circumstances. So I'm putting the, the dark blood gel around the corners to create that depth and that contrast. I'm getting a, a cotton bud to remove some of it and blend it out more because it's a bit too dark. This is um, a fake blood by Mold Life called Kensington Gore and Dark. It looks a lot darker on camera than it did in person. And I'm putting it around the outsides and then using a tissue to kind of smear it around. And I put a lot, <laughs> probably too much on. And I'm using dishwashing liquid to try and um, stop the blood from beating up in the silicon. Now tissue to remove some of it again and, and placing some around the outside. So it doesn't 
quite go back together again. But clothes, it's, it's clothes going back together. And if you wanted to create this look with just the arm piece without the hand, you can um, you can do that by making the incision point towards the elbow the same at the wrist and, and cutting off the hand part from the makeup. Or leaving the hand part out of the makeup. So I decided to get a tissue and remove some more of that blood. <laughs> it did get quite messy. And this 